Hello, everyone. My name is Nikolai Kondrashov. I work at Red Hat in Common Login Team. I focus on user session recording project uh, about which I'm going to talk right now. Uh, I also maintain free radios packages in Rail and Fedora. Uh, in my free time, I, I founded and I still maintain the Digiment project, which works on uh, graphics tablet support in Linux. And I do embed it in the rest of my free time. So user session recording project is uh, about recording what users see and type into the terminal, see on the terminal and type into the terminal, uh, recording what commands the users execute and which files they access, and making that controllable centrally and uh, stored securely, and also about searching, correlating the recordings with other logs and playing back those recordings. So. Our clients, Red Hat clients in uh, government and uh, medical and financial areas, they were asking us for a long while to do this because they required by law sometimes. They want to know who broke their servers and how. They want to know who stole their data if that happens, especially in medical. Uh, they want also trace user problems for support. Uh, has anybody actually been recorded this way ever? Nobody? Has anybody set up recording of users? Okay. Has anybody wished they set up recording for users? Okay, one, two, three. That's good. Okay. So uh, there's a great number of commercial offerings and they go from specialized hardware which you can buy like, like a box put it on your network, plug into network cables, and have it intercept your traffic. And given the keys, it would uh, decrypt your SSH sessions, database, database sessions, uh, other connections, and log that, and record that, and then give you access to it. Uh, and uh, it goes through systems which you can install yourself on, on your hardware, and uh, to, to jump hosts where you log into one system and then thrown to the target system and the software in the middle records that and finally to the systems which record directly on the target host. And this system, they record everything, that, like there is a great range of offerings for recording keystrokes, display including graphical display on Windows, on Unix, on Linux, recording commands, applications that you started under Windows, URLs you accessed in the browser, etc., etc., etc. Uh, and these systems are often integrated with identity management and access control, and some offerings are basically, first of all, identity management solutions and then recording. And of course, they store their stuff on the central servers and they allow audit and searching and uh, post-mortem analysis and playback of those recordings. Unfortunately, there is so far, there was so far no open source solution for this and the classic Descript program is still popular, but it is totally not security-oriented. And if you want to build something that would be security-oriented with it, you need to apply a lot of effort. I actually saw uh, those efforts, and um, there was much more except script there. Uh, then there is sudo io login, which is for recording your sudo sessions. And it has searching of the recordings, and it has the playback but it, it is not centralized, and if you want to centralize that, you have to rsync that or store that in the, on a network file system somewhere. And the, the closest thing that there is is the TTY audit. Uh, it records user input, and it can be uh, centralized as logs can be, and it is security-oriented, but it doesn't record out. So what we decided to do is we implemented a tool called T-Log, which uh, records the terminal I.O. in user space. And uh, we chose to do it in user space because it was faster, faster to do and faster to iterate on development. And it's much easier for users to try. Uh, <clears throat> later, after we started this already, I learned from the audit developers that uh, likely logging the output would not fly with the current architecture. Uh, then we're using 
login infrastructure for delivery of our recordings along with other, with other logs and it lets us save a lot on infrastructure and then maintenance and uh, it allows us to easily correlate with other logs since it's just logs and there are plenty of solutions that allow centralization of log storage and correlation and everything. Uh, and we are using audit logs for recording the rest of the sessions, obviously, because there is already everything. There are comments executed. You can extract that from exactly uh, syscalls. Uh, there are files accessed. Also, you can rec record that as syscalls. There's lots of stuff there which we can use already. So we target enterprise ready long term with storage in Elasticsearch and uh, central control via free IPA, IDM solution, and SSSD on the clients. Uh, we are building web UI for playback and correlation and uh, all the niceties. And we plan to make it as a component so that we could embed it into OpenShift cloud forms or some such solutions. But uh, right now we are building the uh, web UI for cockpit, of which there were talks before by Steph. And uh, we are using control in who to record via SSSD or manually, and we provide going to provide the configuration interface in Cockpit Web UI. Apart from this, for quite a while, we already have command line tools for recording and for playback. So uh, I'm going to quickly show you how I log into a system where the user is recorded, how the recording appears in Cockpit, how we can play it back, and uh, how we can play with those with the list of recordings. So here on the left is the terminal I'm going to be recording. And once you log in there and I do something a little, the session should appear here on the right at the bottom. Uh, let's change it to user one, so it's easier. Uh, which one? The terminal. I'm afraid not. That's the biggest there is. I'm sorry, I'm using next term. Uh, it's, it doesn't really matter, it's just, it, the, the main point is that uh, there is the session on the right. Here we are. We can start playing it back. Rewind it to the end and then we can uh, type away. So I'm entering sudo command. Um, I'll fail it. And it should play back on the right. Come on. Catch up. Okay. Uh, uh, let's try some editing. Mm -hmm. And then we can run MC. It's lagging a little because. Uh, this stuff is logged to journal and is played back and uh, there is a little bit of latency. So basically it looks like this. So uh, we can go back to the recordings, we can uh, do filtering, uh, Enter username, and uh, the point is that all that is stored in journal. All the recordings are recorded to journal. The recordings are listed here from journal and played back directly from journal. So the recording process is started as the user's login shell, and it's uh, in the most basic setup. You simply assign the user with this login shell. Uh, then when the user logs in, that recording process creates a PTY, starts the actual shell under the PTY, and then passes the data between the PTY and the real inter terminal and records everything that passes. Cuts it into pieces, converts to JSON, and logs it. So we optimized our JSON schema for searching and for streaming because uh, the the data from the terminal is continuous, but the messages have to be finite. So we cut, cut it down to pieces. We record input and output as separate fields in JSON. 
restore time in separate with millisecond precision, we preserve everything. And if there are any invalid UTF-8 characters which we cannot put into JSON, we uh, encode them as byte arrays, just specific these bytes. Uh, when we lock the journal, because we want to be able to find our recordings and to list them, we take some of the fields from the, from the JSON message and we don't take them away, but we duplicate them into journal as journal fields. And uh, most of all, the recording ID, which is unique per host, the user that has been recorded because uh, the recording process is set UID, the audit session ID, and the ID of the recording uh, of the recording message within the recording. So Cockpit uses very basic uh, interface to access the journal, which nevertheless is reliable and well efficient enough for our purposes so far. Uh, basically, runs journal CTL on the host. Ask, asks it to output in JSON all the entries, and the code in, in the browser supplies it with various options to, to do the things that we need. So when we list the recordings, we ask the journal CTL to match uh, UID of the, pro of the recording process, the set UID recording process, because we want to trust, to be able to trust those messages so that we don't mix with like the same messages or faked messages from users or from other programs. Then if we are filtering by username, we get the, the username. Uh, we, we can limit the input and uh, the since and until date. And we ask for all the records and we tell it to follow so we can update the list of recordings, as you saw. So we read everything at the moment, all the messages that match, including the data and everything, which is quite um, well, wasteful, and we find out the unique recording IDs and aggregate all the information about recordings from, from the journal entries. When we are playing, we again add the set UID of the recording process, again for the same reasons. Then we add the recording ID, and there we go. We just list all the entries, we follow the recording so that we can play back uh, recordings as, as, as they go. And we read all the entries and start decoding them immediately as we open the page. And as soon as the first entry arrives, we're ready to play. So uh, next step will be one next big step will be correlating with audit logs. Uh, and since that is quite a mess and uh, difficult to work with, even both with uh, the original audit logs and even with the logs that journal generates. We made a tool that uh, joins the messages that belong to a single event in the kernel because audit logs quite often actually logs several log messages for a single event. They can be intermixed if the events happen in parallel. And uh, these messages contain some values that we need to match against to correlate, but only one of the messages belonging to the event contains that value, so we need to be able to match the whole event uh, so that we don't do several requests for entries. We have to make it in a single go. So we are joined that in a single event, organize the fields a little, and uh, log it as JSON as well using this O-shape tool that we made. The plan is to correlate with uh, recording, basically, is to add another another match to the to the journal CTL, CTL command line, which would match also the relevant uh, journal entries, basically by audit session ID. And the plan for the UI is that we have the terminal, we have the little window with the logs, and they scroll alone as we play back the session, and we can click on the particular log entry and rewind the playback to that position. Uh, so, there is the, uh, some of the things that we would like to improve in journal CTL. Maybe we'll be doing the patches sometime soon. Uh, first of all, I know that the um, journal has indices for, 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 for field values, and that's great and that works fast, but we would like to try to get uh, matches uh, for partial field values so that the user can actually start matching the entries 
by user or by host name while they type, so they don't have to type exactly the, same, the value that appears in the field, which is uh, true right now. Uh, we would also be able to match recorded input and output, the stuff that appeared on the terminal and the user typed in, and we would also be able to search related logs, such as uh, searching for parts of command that was executed uh, in the audit logs and then being able to correlate that. Uh, we wouldn't mind if it would be a bit slow, so that's okay. Uh, also, as we release the recordings, we don't need the messages from the entries, we just need like several fields, and the messages is the huge part, of, like the overwhelming part of these entries with the recording. Uh, so that's why we, we would like journal CTL to return on some fields. Then, uh, not related to journal, but still interesting, uh, we might need to handle different terminal types in a reliable manner. Even though now terminal types are basically similar and nothing probably will happen, uh, we might need to do something with that. So as of now, if you want a uh, faithful reproduction, you have to play back uh, in the same terminal that you recorded. Then there's a problem that the, web, the JavaScript terminal emulator we use is supporting only a subset of control sequences. So to do, to do that, we would like to maybe uh, embed the a terminal emulator library into the recording process so that we can present a single terminal type to all the recorded programs and have a single uh, language that we record of the uh, control sequences. And there is the library that's called libvterm being used by NeoVim if anybody knows it. Uh, then character encodings is a much more real problem. Uh, parts of the world still don't use UTF-8 and, uh, for example, Japanese. It's not very popular with them in big part because of the um, conflicts between various uh, hieroglyphs between cultures. Uh, so we will need to convert that to it UTF-8 anyway if you want to search this con consistently in Elasticsearch and if you want to search it, uh, if you want to store it in JSON at all. So conversion can lose data, that's why we're thinking maybe we'll be just compressing the original to preserve that and uh, then keeping both versions, one for search and one for, for storage. And since we are preserving the original, we might as well clean up the recording so that there are no control characters or something like that which would interfere with searching. So, and the final and the most interesting perhaps is the seeking the playback. So, since the what you see on the terminal depends on what you output from, from the way before, it's like you can send some color attribute at the start of your session and see everything in blue or something more important than that and it all depends on everything that was before to play back, to, to produce a state of the terminal at the particular moment, we would need to play everything back from the start. And this, this is obviously slow for if you have lots of I.O. and you're recording like paging through something all the time or that's just watching some output of a program on like for two hours. That can take a while to process and output from the start. So we only have the start, start state that we know. And to work around that, uh, we are thinking maybe hijacking the terminal emulator and the playback so that we can take uh, keyframes, states of the, of the terminal emulator at regular intervals, and then we, can, then we will need to be playing that little part back only. Uh, and if we get the terminal emulator library in the recording, then we will be able to, of course, to generate these keyframes on the fly as the record, and they will be in storage, and the playback will be much faster. Okay, so there are three slides. I'm not going to go through them. You can get this li these slides if you'd like to try it uh, from the uh, All Systems Go website. Uh, if you try TLOG, try to break it, please. We need that. Uh, try your shape, you can just feed it your audit logs and see how it looks. That would be nice. And if you are really determined, and if you get hold of some of these guys from Cockpit who can help you, you can try to build Cockpit and see the UI. It will look different 
late, later, but right now it's working. That's it. Questions? Did you implement the virtual terminal in JavaScript in the cockpit UI? Uh, we took the we took the ready-made uh, term.js library, and we just fit it fit it the I/O data. That was easy. So what about GUI? So GUI, uh, we have the web UI. No, I mean, if I start, say, Emacs in terminal, it opens GTK window, and I start doing things in there. How T-Log reacts? Well, we don't record anything in the graphical sessions. We are thinking of maybe doing, when, when you have a terminal session inside the graphical session, it kind of doesn't make much sense because you have so much opportunity to do something using different means. And uh, graphical sessions should be recorded graphically, so you have to record the whole picture. That will be a far away step, and so far we are focusing on servers where you usually don't have the graphical interface. But there are, there are solutions which record the graphical interface, so it's definitely possible, and we are having little plans for the future for that. You mentioned that you need to make the user shell, the shim thing there. Um, uh, does can you then um, like hand back to any shell, or do you, are you emulating some specific shell? Like no, no, users generally want specific shells. There can be any program running under this. That, that's configured at the moment. It's configured in the recording process globally per system, and there is a way uh, with this SSD. If you use SSD, it will actually imitate the, sh the shell being replaced and supply the actual shell that you have in etc pass wd or in LDAP or in IPA, whatever you, whatever you want. So since it works with the terminal, what's the advantage of doing it on this level instead of doing it in SSH daemon, for instance? Uh, it, it works in, in any terminal. It doesn't have to be SSH. It can be console. Telnet, if you want. <laughs> if you are in a terminal and you type cat and then a big file and it print megabytes on the mm -hmm. terminal, what happened with the journal? Uh, well, by default, at this moment, uh, the journal will be swamped yes, with lots of stuff, but you can turn on rate limiting and you can set the uh, rate at which the messages are logged to journal and the output will simply slow down. So if, if you're silly enough, you can wait, of course, until this is over, or you can just terminate your process and do a pager, which will be then faster for you to, to see all the files or the parts that you need. We also implement, by some requests, dropping the journal messages. If they, the, you will see it fast, going fast, but only part of that will be logged. So I suppose the idea was that we don't care about fast output, we only care about what users type into the terminal. So. What happens if you type a password by mistake in a terminal? It is recorded. By default, we don't record the input. You can turn it on, but we don't record the input by default because everything that you type usually you can see on the screen. And then this, uh, this, the idea of this recording is not that uh, it records really everything that you do because there are a million ways to avoid being recorded in this situation. It is rather to capture the intent of malicious intent if somebody has it than the actual act because if people really prepare it will be easy to circumvent that and the real uh, recording part real audit part is of course the audit logs and you have to set it up properly as so so that you capture these things all right no more questions thank you